Imagine that you come home from a hard day's work only to find a note on your door from the United States government letting you know they have chosen to seize your land and you no longer live there. Your money will be available within 10 days at the local courthouse. To top that off, the amount of money that they're offering you, far less than you expected. This is a process in real estate known as eminent domain, and it is a process in which the government can forcibly take your land. Prior to the year of 1942, the city of Oak Ridge actually didn't exist. It was more made up of communities. These communities included neighborhoods such as Edgemore, Elza, East Fork, Wheat, Robertsville, Scarborough, and Bethel. These East Tennessee communities in total made up about 60,000 acres of farmland and held about 1,000 families across this land. The area was relatively unheard of, very rural, but thanks to recent developments from the TVA, the area actually had access to ample electricity. <laughs> would prove beneficial later in this story. It's early September of 1939. The Great Depression is not long behind us. Frank? Me think somebody made a boo-boo. Maybe we didn't know how to use Quicken. Yeah, that could be it. And Hitler has just invaded Poland. World War II has officially been ushered in. Just two years later, the Japanese would attack Pearl Harbor, ushering the United States directly into the battlefield. While some sources vary, it's estimated that around 75 million people died as a result of World War II. The world was in turmoil and Adolf Hitler was steadily gaining ground. And between the revelation of Adolf Hitler's evil plans, in addition to the fear that he could possess nuclear weapons or would certainly have used them had he been able to attain them, the United States knew that they immediately had to take action to end this war. In fact, it was actually said that Albert Einstein drafted a letter to the United States warning of Adolf Hitler's nuclear capabilities. In response to this, the Manhattan Project was founded. This was an effort led by the United States alongside our allies with one goal and purpose, to end World War II and to topple both Adolf Hitler and the Japanese regime. So in 1942, the very brightest minds in the world at the time, or at least those that the government was sure that they could trust, began a series of very secretive meetings. And it was in these meetings that a small, rural, no-name East Tennessee town was chosen. This is the story of Oak Ridge, Tennessee. If you remember earlier in the video, I had painted the picture of what would happen if you came home from a hard day's work only to find a note on your door that the United States government had chosen to forcibly take your land. I was tripping, man. You want me to ask for my bike back? You know I wouldn't trip. What bike? The beach cruiser. The one I let you use a couple of weeks ago. The one I've been asking you about. Oh, that bike. Hey, no, you wanted it back, homie. It's right here. Follow me, homie. Yeah, it's just like it's both ours. We just keep it down at my house. Cool. That is exactly what happened. As with that Manhattan Project, Oak Ridge, Tennessee would become the new name of the place chosen by the United States government to build the atomic bomb. This was chosen for several reasons. Number one would be secrecy. Oak Ridge would go on to have many nicknames, and one of those nicknames would include the Secret City. This is because the town of Oak Ridge at that time, which was originally a few different communities added together, totaling about 60,000 acres of land or so, this area was relatively unheard of. And that was a good thing. It's exactly what the United States government needed. To add to that, due to the TVA and the advancements in bringing hydroelectric power to the area, this area was perfect as it also had the ability for massive amounts of electricity which would be needed to pull this off. And then lastly were the mountain ridges. 
Oak Ridge and the general area in East Tennessee is often surrounded by mountain ridges. This would create kind of a bowl shape effect which would help contain the blast in the event of an accident. Thankfully, that accident never happened. And on October 6, an executive order was signed for the government to go in and possess roughly 59,000 acres of land and create the town of Oak Ridge. It's even reported that some of these families only received about $900 for their entire tract of land, which even at that time was relatively low. However, you also have to put yourself in the shoes of people during that time. Most of these folks that live there, while they love their property and they love their Tennessee land, they had somebody out fighting that war. They had somebody in their family who likely had died in that war already. So at this point, these folks were ready to see America win, and they were ready to see their country get back on track and not be taken away from them by foreign nations. As the communities quickly evacuated over the next couple of months, in record time, the city of Oak Ridge would go on to be built. It's estimated that this process only took about 10 months for them to create an entire city as well as the facilities to build the atomic bomb. So throughout 1942 and 1943, the government began to construct what would become Oak Ridge, Tennessee. At the very height of nuclear development, Oak Ridge actually used more electricity than some of New York City's boroughs. The very peak of the population in Oak Ridge during this time was estimated to be around 75,000 residents. However, most residents did not even know why they were there. During their work, they were given colored bands, and each of these bands represented where they should be and what they should be working on within the compartment within that town. So if somebody were over here, say they were working at the store to help folks as they live in this town that was just created, well, they had a colored band uh, appropriating themselves to that area. So person B over here would not really know what person A knew over here. And they weren't really allowed, although the general store is probably a poor example of that, of course, but they weren't really allowed to talk about their work to one another. And if anybody did, the people in charge were supposed to give a report once a week on Friday to let them know if anyone had been saying anything that they should not have said. The goal here was absolute secrecy, as any information that could be used against us, if that information ended up in the wrong hands, it could very well change human history. As our brave soldiers were out fighting the war in an effort to save America, the American population had no idea that this bomb or these bombs were actually being built. And even within the city of Oak Ridge, the vast majority of the people there had very limited access to knowledge as did the general public across the nation as to what was happening and America's plan to save the world. Harry Truman knew he had one shot to pull this off. One mistake, even a contained blast, would warn the enemies of what we were trying to accomplish and it could cause them to retaliate with the same game plan. <laughs> If this thing messed up, it could change the course of human history. The atomic bomb's production was completed in the month of June 1945, just days ahead of schedule. On August 6, 1945, the first atomic bomb, Fat Man, was dropped on Hiroshima, Japan. The second bomb, known as Little Boy, would be dropped on the town of Nagasaki. It's estimated that the total combined deaths from these two bombs were between 150,000 and around 250,000 thousand people. While that is absolutely horrible, the total death toll in this war was around 75 million towards its end. So in this particular situation, virtually any government would look at the amount of casualties resulted from that bomb, the war that they had been fighting, and realize that we simply had the lesser of two evils on our hands with the atomic bombs. Although hotly debated, history would go on to generally support this idea, at least as far as the majority goes. Just under a month later, on September 2nd of 1945, the Japanese surrendered, bringing an end to World War II. The world was finally healing, getting back to normal, and Adolf Hitler was dead and gone. Thank God. Almost immediately after the war, the population of Oak Ridge shrunk from 75,000 folks down to 31,000 people. This put the newly constructed town of Oak Ridge 
through quite a bit of growing pains. Over the next couple of years, several key scientists and figures would rally for the city to become a scientific hotspot where the brightest minds in the world could meet, think, develop, and work. However, this took quite a bit of convincing to do as people generally thought of rural Tennessee as not really a place for scientific development. However, the folks that doubted what a small East Tennessee town could do in the area of science would be proven wrong over time. And since that post-Manhattan Project era of Oak Ridge, the town of Oak Ridge has gone on to be a key role in several scientific developments worldwide. Some of these developments include the invention of the touchscreen for one. Oak Ridge has actually built two of the fastest supercomputers in the world. Both at the time were the fastest computers on earth. Oak Ridge has held this title two times and Oak Ridge is always in the forefront of this race for this title of the world's fastest supercomputer. Today actually from the recording of this video Oak Ridge is still number two in the world for the fastest computer on earth. Oak Ridge actually created the first 3D printed car has created a 3D printed house, and it was where shortly after the war, two elements were actually discovered. And to this day, the scientific research, the development that goes on within the town of Oak Ridge is absolutely phenomenal. As a real estate agent, getting to work with so many scientists from so many different walks of life that move into the area, quite a blessing to get to meet these minds. They are a different breed of people. One young man I work with was so smart, he actually was sent to other countries to help with the programming of their power grids. I don't even understand what I just said, but that was his job. The population never quite recovered from World War II. And to this day, we sit at about 31,000 folks in the town of Oak Ridge. Keep in mind, we've had a huge influx of folks in East Tennessee over the past four years, so this number is likely greater today. Oak Ridge also enjoys close proximity to Knoxville and is considered one of the 17 suburbs that make up the Knox metro area. This area in general has around a million people, maybe slightly under according to some reports. However, again, those censuses were taken before the massive influx of people. So last count about 900,000 total, and that includes Knoxville, Maryville, Oak Ridge, all of the surrounding places. So there's a ton of stuff to do. Oak Ridge is also a very active community. You have Melton Hill Lake and all that stuff. So see a lot of folks out there kayaking, a lot of folks running. Like I said, Oak Ridge is a very active area with tons of trails and lakes surrounding the area. This area is actually the town of Knoxville anyway, surrounded by seven lakes. So you got lakes like Cherokee, Douglas, Norris, Melton Hill, Teleco, Watts Bar, and so on. All of these lakes give us a ton of stuff to do, and it's actually what helped create the power to power the city of Oak Ridge, which literally saved the world. So that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of this. Oak Ridge is a super cool town. No, the deer don't glow in the dark there or anything that I'm aware of, and, you know, we don't have any cool uh, space alien stuff going on that I'm aware of. Then again, I'm a real estate agent, and I don't work for the government, so... I probably don't know a lot either. But anyways, y'all have a very blessed day. Hope to see you on the next one. Thank you for watching.